salutations all what it do baby so I've had an individual that has been on my neck about this video here I said that I would do it I know that I procrastinate I do apologize but uh, we're gonna do it today all right I told you to have faith and be patient with me here it is what are we doing today we're gonna make some rolls easy peasy lemon squeezy baby we're gonna make some yeast rolls let's get into this adventure Now, as I've said in the past, uh, you know, when we cook in the kitchen, on average, it's a pinch of this, a pinch of that, we eyeball, you know, it's just, it's muscle memory type thing. And you can get away with that in most cases when you are cooking hot food. Baking, on the other hand, is an exact science. Uh, so, because of that, I took the time to write this down. So let's get into this ingredient list today. Obviously. We're making bread, we're gonna have flour and things like that, okay? So <clears throat> what you're gonna wanna do is you wanna have two tablespoons of some kind of fat, of an oil. Whether it's Crisco, you remember the big cans that used to sit on the stove with mom? Uh, you can do olive oil, you can do butter. I mean, it's really gonna be your choice on that coconut oil. I mean, you know, you just want some fat. And this is gonna be a, a drilled down recipe, or drilled down uh, amount. So you can always double, triple, whatever as you need. So all right, we're gonna start off with two tablespoons of oil. We also want three tablespoons of plain sugar. We'll explain why, because we're not making sweet rolls. You're gonna want one cup of hot water, okay? Uh, you're gonna want a pack of yeast, right? Like a little quarter pack of yeast. They come in threes. Uh, I don't know where I put mine, there it is. Uh, I'm using this one today. I've got a couple different brands. Don't mind the oven. Uh, so just gonna need one pack of that. You're gonna want one egg that you've already beat. All right, give it to Joe Jackson. Uh, one teaspoon of salt and two and a quarter cups of flour okay now with the hot water you want to start off with the water hot right pretty good and hot and we're gonna add the sugar to the water we just want it hot because we want to help to dissolve that sugar a little faster so I've got my water here with my sugar in it once the temperature comes down on that water and it's lukewarm um, you can go ahead and add the yeast to it and you can do this ahead of time and you can do a little warm water with the sugar and you can add the yeast and let it sit for a while and do its thing the sugar feeds the yeast all right so <clears throat> if you have a, a high sugar uh, diet you're more likely to have anyway um, so the sugar feeds the yeast that's what helps it do its thing and if the water is too hot we end up killing the yeast and we we don't want that all right so I've got my water with my sugar here I've got my beaten egg over here as well, and I just went ahead and added the salt uh, directly to the egg. Now, I also have a little bit of butter set aside, and we're going to use this uh, on the tops of our rolls when we are putting them into the oven, as well as once they come out, obviously, we're going to need some butter. So, that's the ingredient list, right? Crazy easy. Well, let's get into the mixing parts. Now that my water temp has come down, uh, I went ahead and added my yeast to that. Give that a good stir. We want to try to get that yeast dissolved really well into that water. I'm also going to go ahead and add my oil to the water over here on the side. I'm going to add my oil to that as well. So we've got all my wet ingredients together with the exception of my egg. All right. And we're going to let the water come down a little bit more before we, uh, before we add that in the mix. Alright, and remember the eggs already got the uh, salt beaten into it, so in my water cup I've got my yeast, my sugar obviously, my water, and my oil. Alright, now we're going to go on with our two and a quarter cups of flour. And if you have a sifter, if you even know what that is, uh, I would recommend using it. Sifter is just going to add a little air to that and make, separate those little particles of the flour. Not necessary, right? Not necessary, but it is helpful. Alright, now we're going to start adding in our yeasty water mix. No monostat needed. Go right in the middle there. The gloves are not necessary. I'm just a weirdo. I have a thing about stuff on my skin. Very weird with textures. So anyway, start mixing that in real nice and easy peasy. Always have a little bit of extra uh, flour on the side. 
But if we need, I might have went a little too heavy with my water there. About a quarter cup short of my flour. So we're gonna add a little flour and bring that together. While I'm getting that, let's go ahead and add my egg in. So we can get that mixed as well. So like I said, I'm about a quarter cup short on my flour. So don't mind me, let me step away and get that. All right, so we're back. Uh, like I said, I had to add a little more flour to it uh, so we can get where we're trying to go. And that's okay, it happens sometimes with baking. So you always wanna have a little extra on the side. And you're just gonna slowly start sprinkling in flour on that until you can get it to form into a nice uh, dough ball. And just keep adding a little at a time till you get where you want. If your mix is a little bit too moist, no big deal. All right, we'll try to get all this dry flour up really nicely so you can form a proper dough ball. And by proper dough ball, I mean you should be able to roll that bad boy around on a clean surface and make a nice smooth ball with it. And that's how you know you're going in the right direction. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this out of this bowl and clean this bowl out. And then I'm going to grease the bowl, right? I'm going to spray a little vegetable in there. And the reason being is because we want this to uh, rise and, in essence, double in size. So I want a nice smooth surface so that the, uh, the dough can move with very little resistance and the bowls get to its maximum potential, its maximum fattiness, right? And, I mean, it really depends on your settings, how long that's going to take, obviously, we're not, we don't have a, a proofer, right? We don't have something fancy in the house for that. Um, so you wanna put it in a nice warm space. I'm gonna cover this with plastic as well to keep in as much moisture as possible. Sometimes I might put a lightly damp uh, kitchen towel on top of the dough, right? Add that moisture like you would get in a proofer. Uh, and I've got the oven on. My oven is on at 425 degrees. So once I get this cleaned out and what not ready to go greased up I will set this on the oven and let the, the warmth of the oven help my cause here and you're gonna let this ball double in size all right so I would say it takes probably about 30 minutes 30 to 45 minutes maybe even pushing up on an hour um, to get that you just got to be patient right so we're gonna get this cleaned out we're gonna get this covered up and on the stove to proof and see how big it is now and uh, I guess we're gonna go sort laundry while we wait so we've got our nice ball of dough there into our greased up bowl and I'm gonna just cover this with a little bit of plastic to keep in as much moisture as I can And we're gonna set this bad boy on the oven. We're gonna set a timer for about 45 minutes. We're gonna come back, check to see if it has doubled in size. All right. All right, so we are back. We allowed the uh, dough to do its thing for about an hour, sitting on top of the stove here. You can see it's fogged up from the steaming, the moisture there. It's got quite a bit bigger on us, right? Easy peasy, man. All right, so <clears throat> what we're gonna do, I'm gonna grease up my muffin pan over here. A little bit of vegetable spray. All right, and then we're just gonna be real light and easy with this. Just gonna knock it down a little bit. Let some of that air out. I'm not gonna really put a lot of pressure on it or you know, be too forceful with it. I just wanna knock some of that air out. And then we're going to start making our individual rolls. And to do that, I'm just going to pinch a little bit of dough off. Now, just to depend on how big you're wanting to make your rolls, I'm going to go with a pretty large muffin pan there. All right. Now, you know, if you've got a scale, by all means, you know, you can do this and measure them out and make sure that they're equal. Or, you know, you can always eyeball the weight if you want to admit to having that ability. Um... 
just gonna pinch a little bit off there. I'm gonna make a little ball, being very light with that. I wanna, like I said, I don't wanna really mash it down, but I do wanna shape that nicely. And boom. So I'm gonna fill these bad boys up. Uh, once you've got them in there, we're gonna do this process of the rising all over again. And we're gonna allow the dough balls to essentially double in size again inside of our muffin pan. These are so uneven. I can't eyeball the work, I'm sorry. Once we got them all in there, we're gonna, like I said, let them double over again. They'll be proofing out of the top there. It'll be, you know, you know what it's supposed to look like, like in the commercials, right? Coming out the top. And then we're gonna throw them into the oven. If you remember, I've got that oven set at uh, 425. The dough can also be frozen. You know, if you want to use it for something else, you can always freeze it at the beginning of the process, pull it out of the freezer, and you let it proof in that way. All right, so we got our pan filled there. Our muffin pan is filled. I'm not going to cover them with plastic this time because we want them to grow big and strong, and I don't want them to be restricted or oppressed by the plastic. All right. So I'm going to put these back on top of my stove and uh, allow them to double up and then we'll get them into the oven. So just a quick uh, update before we get them into the oven. I just want to show you where we were at. It's been about 15 minutes or so. We're going to give these a few more minutes, get a little bit bigger. All right. Uh, but you do have to be careful. You can do, uh, you can overdo these. You can overproof your rolls of your bread. So what will happen is they will expand, 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 and then they'll get so far and then they'll deflate. So we don't want to do that. We're going to give them about, uh, about five to 10 more minutes. And then we're going to go into the oven at 425. All right. So I'm getting a little too hungry and impatient to wait any longer. So remember that butter that I talked about before? That's an optional thing. Of course, I'm going to just hit these real light with a little silicone brush here and hit these with this butter all right you've seen they've got a little bigger since the last time we did the update and they could probably go a little even a little bigger a lot of the times when I do these rolls I will do a double dough ball in there so like I posted pictures in the past you see it looks like a big split top muffin that's because I put two um, balls of dough in there that's where you get that sexy looking type of roll there all right so we're gonna butter these down really really nice remember that's in a sprayed pan as well and I'm gonna pop these in the oven and I'm gonna go about 12 minutes on these keeping an eye on them about 10 to 12 minutes see where we're at and uh, hopefully be delicious after that let's do it all right our timer just went off I reached over and turned this oven off here let's check these rolls out let's see where we're at with that yeah So fresh out of the oven, gonna hit them again with this butter, and then I will gladly burn my fingers for your amusement, so we can tear one of these bad boys open. Oh, they're so shiny! That smell, man. All right, let's see. Let me try to. Let's try one out. Let's see. Oh my. Oh my. Oh man. <laughs> so, oh my gosh, look at that. I mean, look at that. Alright. Dinner rolls, man. Oh, that burned my fingers real good. Alright. Let's talk about this. Well, there you have it. Uh, dinner rolls, right? Rolls. I don't have to say be for dinner. Um, so for me personally, you want to get that like light, crazy, airy, uh, you know, super soft and fluffy. That's really going to come down to your yeast uh, and your patience for that proofing process, right? Uh, you might even be able to hit it with a little bit of baking powder. You know, it does the same thing. It's, it's going to cause a chemical reaction. 
the uh, gas that the yeast gives off is what causes the bread to expand. Same thing with like your baking powder, powder not soda, powder not soda. But it does the same thing, right? It causes a chemical reaction in that dough. It releases the gas. The gas is what makes it expand. And the larger you can let it get, of course, the airier your rolls are going to be or the lighter. Um, you know, this is pretty good texture right here. These are a little bit thick. Probably should let them go a little longer. Eh, that's my impatience getting in the way. Um, but it is what it is. So I'm going to finish up the rest of this meal get this gravy whipped up so I have something to dip these rolls in let me know how yours turn out uh, please man enjoy yourself right this is super easy it just takes a little bit of patience on that proofing side but uh, while you're waiting maybe you can uh, buy you a nice apple butter a mm, little honey butter mm -hmm. all right thanks for joining us let's go around guys see you next time Before I walk away and forget, I want to thank my absolutely wonderful young niece, uh, Ms. Raya, for hooking us up with that intro. Please check her out. I have learned a lot. I am not afraid to admit it. That young one is so much better at these videos than I am. So thank you very much, Cheeky Baby, for your intro. All right.